hello students how are you i hope you all are doing good so uh, we are back with the next session of the chapter which we were doing light shadows and reflection okay so in the previous uh, lecture what we have discussed already is regarding the properties of light that what is light then we see what are the type of objects transparent translucent and opaque yeah and then we finish our discussion with the topic shadow that what are necessary things required for shadow how the size of image affects in the shadow or how the size of shadow will be affected so that all we have learned already in the previous lecture okay so now we are starting with the new lecture or second lecture of this chapter okay so now let's start <clears throat> yeah so if i give you an example um, regarding which we are going to study here um, if you can see uh, all of you have used some binoculars in your childhood yeah we use binoculars to observe the objects or i can say distant objects clearly so what you do whenever you have to observe any object through binoculars what you do you just point the binoculars towards that object yes or no have you done like that you want to observe some object on the left side and you are pointing the binoculars towards your right i think no yeah all of you must have heard or i must have you seen the practical use in your childhood yeah so where wherever we want to see the objects we point the binoculars right there so there is was some reason for that that whenever the light ray comes it should come in a straight line that's why it is reaching the binoculars in a straight line so wherever or whenever you want to see the object at that line of object you have to point the binoculars because light travels in a straight line path so that is the property which is known as rectilinear motion of light yeah or you can say linear propagation of light so i think you have all seen that binocular phenomena so this is based on linear propagation of light right so now we are going to study today these much topics first is the linear propagation of light as i already told you what is linear propagation of light second topic we are going to study is reflection third one is laws of reflection then we'll see image pinhole camera and then finally we will finish with the plane mirror and image formed by plane mirror we'll see the properties of image formed by the plane mirror correct so now we are good to go so i will give you one another example suppose this is a candle this is a candle and there is a straight pipe right here so person is observing this candle like this so he will able to see the candle from this because due to the light has linear propagation like this so light from the candle will reach the eyes of the person or the observer whichever is present here but yeah if i just make this tube like this if i just make it truncated or just bend it like this now again this is the candle right here this is the observer at the other end now will he be able to see the light of the candle no because light travels in a straight line it never turns like this it never travels like in a bending way so that is known as linear propagation of light or rectilinear motion of light linear propagation of light okay so i hope this is clear that light travels in a straight line path which is known as linear propagation of light so based on this property of linear propagation of light we have seen the phenomena of shadow in the previous class now another phenomena is also based on the linear propagation of light which is known as reflection which is known as reflection okay so whenever we wake up or every day we see in the mirror yeah we see ourselves in the mirror so whatever we are seeing in the mirror is due to the process which is known as reflection so reflection is the process which is the reason for you to able to see yourself in the mirror so whatever you are observing in the mirror is the process or is the result of the process reflection this thing is clear now basically we are going to see what is reflection yeah so can you see this image in this image a person is clicking a photo uh, i guess on a railway track so there is some mirror present here and from the mirror you can see he is holding a camera and he is taking the image of himself yeah he is trying to take some kind of image in which he is seen in the mirror so whatever is this present here or whatever image is present in the mirror is due to the process which is known as reflection so if i simply define reflection reflection is the bouncing back of light rays bouncing back of light rays in the same medium like this suppose 
light rays coming in a straight line path linear propagation so after getting reflected from this surface it will bounce back like this so this bouncing back of light into the same medium is known as reflection of light and in the previous lecture also we have seen that you are able to see the objects i am talking about non luminous objects so you are able to see these non luminous objects because of the process of reflection that whenever light from the luminous objects falls on non luminous objects it get reflected and due to that reflection reflected ray you are able to see that objects yes or no so reflection phenomena is present everywhere and the reason for reflection phenomena is linear propagation of light linear propagation of light so i think this thing is clear what is reflection what is the reason for reflection yeah in which nature of light is responsible for reflection which is linear propagation of light so i hope i am clear up to this so this is reflection the bouncing back of light into the same medium okay now we are going to study some more things about refraction first of all we are going to study in this lecture is geometric optics so geometric optics is that a uh, part of optics in which you study about light and the phenomena of reflection and one phenomena is known as refraction and in geometric optics we talk about mirrors also we are going to study about basically mirrors there there are also lens in the optics but we are not concerned as far as our syllabus is concerned we are only concerned with mirrors yeah so we'll study some properties about mirrors that how reflection happens in mirrors what are the types of mirror all these things okay so we'll move forward now now see this diagram <clears throat> there are two methods of metering either you can do a handheld metering just by a simple device and you can also use a camera for in camera metering okay so what is the basic difference between these you can see in handheld metering you are directly using the incident line to capture the results yeah you are directly using the incident light of the sun which is incident on the handheld meter so directly you get the results but what is the case in the camera if you are capturing any image in camera what you are doing you are using reflected light how the light from the sun will incident on the mountain like this it will get reflected and reach the camera lens like this so basically in camera what you are using you are using the reflected light to get the image and in the case of handheld metering what you are doing you are using the incident light to get the results so the basic difference is clear the one is known as incident light and the light which is reaching to you after reflection reflection can be from any object so the light which is reaching you after reflection is known as reflected light so this thing is clear so everywhere you can see reflection the basic or common example is that uh, every day you see yourself in the mirror that is due to the prof so phenomena known as reflection done clear so i hope everything is clear we are going to the different different definitions so this is ray model of light so next is ray model of light what is ray model of light i already told you at the start of the class light has a property which is known as rectilinear motion or you can say linear propagation of light linear propagation of light then so rectilinear or linear propagation of light means lines travels in a straight line path but yeah the thing which you need to show the path of light is known as ray of light so ray of light the straight line you show with a arrow so a straight line is showing the path of light which is linear propagation and arrow is showing the direction so this is the way to represent a light which is known as ray of light or you can simply say light ray either ray of light or you can simply say light okay so as you can see this is a candle the candle is a luminous object because it has its, its own light so candle is a luminous object so here you can see sphere of light around the luminous source so this is a luminous source candle so it is spreading light in all directions yes or no it is it is spreading light in all directions so whatever phenomena or whatever thing you are using to show the light is known as ray so you can see the various number of rays these red color rays as you can see these all are in straight line yes or no these all are in straight line then they have a arrow like this so arrow is showing their direction that they are moving away from the source or they are originating from the light source which is candle in this case yeah 
so this is the way to show the light so whenever we are now showing the light in our know, paper as far as optics is concerned we will show it with a ray straight line with a arrow showing the direction so that is the process of showing the light and we will use the word light ray for that whenever you draw this this is known as ray of light or light ray simply done okay so next is ray diagram terminology now we are going to see some terms related to ray diagram what is ray diagram ray diagram is the combination of light rays yeah to form the image so basically how the image is formed is shown with the help of light rays because in the phenomena of reflection what is happening we'll see later but first uh, see the terminology then okay so see this is this is there are two rays so this is a process or this is a light you can see the arrow is shown like this can you can you see the arrow is shown like this so this is the direction of light so this light ray is incident on a mirror which is given as plane mirror okay so this light ray is incident on a mirror which is plane mirror yeah so you can see light is getting incident and due to the process of reflection light will bounce back like this so this is the light ray which is being bounced back so this bounce back light is known as reflected ray so the ray which is coming on the surface is known as incident ray and the ray which is getting away after reflection is known as reflected ray okay now see this is the angle this red line is the normal this red line is known as normal normal means perpendicular to every surface yeah normal means perpendicular to that surface on which the reflection is going on and the angle between normal and incident ray is known as angle of incidence and the angle between normal and reflected ray is known as angle of reflection so these are the basic basic terminologies we are getting the basic idea about these terminologies incident ray reflected ray normal angle of incidence angle of reflection done okay so now we are going to first see what are the types of mirrors what are the types of mirrors so we are basically have two types of mirror this one on the left is known as a spherical mirror so if you carefully see this mirror what you can see the surface is not uh, linear or not straight if you can see if you can see it sideways the surface is not linear surface is like is like this so either the surface can be like this curved outwards or the surface can be like this curved inwards yeah so for every mirror there are basically two types of surfaces for every mirror there are basically two types of surface one surface is known as reflecting surface one surface is known as reflecting surface the surface from which reflection will take place and the opposite surface will be known as polished surface polish surface or you can say uh, non reflecting surface also you can also say non reflecting surface both are the same thing so why we polish one side of the mirror because if you do not polish the mirror from one side the reflection will take place from both the sides yes or no and we only want the reflection to take place from one side only so one surface from which the reflection take place is known as reflecting surface and the opposite one which is polished is known as polished surface or non reflecting surface so as you can see there is a girl showing his hands or showing her hands towards the mirror so whatever this portion of mirror is is known as reflecting surface this is the reflecting surface and whatever surface is present on the opposite side is known as the polished or non reflecting surface okay so this mirror is known as spherical mirrors spherical mirrors are spherical in shape basically spherical mirrors are named according to their shape as you can see these two mirrors i have drawn if you can carefully see these two mirrors which i have drawn already <clears throat> let's see what are their names basically yeah so now see suppose this is the mirror this is the way of showing polished surface yeah this is the way of showing polished surfaces that the back portion is the polished surface and the front portion is the reflecting surface so the mirror in which the reflecting surface is curved inwards are known as concave mirrors are known as concave mirrors and the mirrors for which the reflecting surface is like this curved outwards 
curved outwards. So these are known as convex mirror. So according to the nature or the shape of the reflecting surface, mirrors are named as concave and convex mirror. Concave mirrors have curved inward shape like this, and convex mirror have reflecting surface curved outwards. Basic difference is clear. And the mirror which you see on the right is the most common mirror you see your every day yourself in front of it. Yeah. So whatever mirror we use in everyday life to observe ourselves in the mirror is the plane mirror. So as the name is suggesting, plane mirror has a linear or a straight surface like this. So if you see this mirror from sideways, it will look like this. It will look like a straight mirror. The concept is same again. One side of the mirror is known as reflecting surface from which you are observing yourself. So this is known as reflecting surface. And the other side of the mirror is known as polished surface. Okay. So now think uh, some of you might get a doubt that sir, why there is polished surface required. So I have already given you the explanation that polished surface is required because if there was no polished surface, what will happen? Reflection will take place from both the sides and you will not get a distinct image or clear image. Yes or no? So for getting a clear image, we will keep a one surface as a reflecting surface and another surface as polished surface. So that reflection will take place from the one of the surface. Only. So that is the case. Okay. So I think I think this is also clear. What are the types of mirror? Done. Okay. Now there is a way of showing the mirrors. I have already shown you. This is the basically actual mirror. You can see on the left, which is the actual mirror. This is a glass basically. Yeah. So what you can see in the glass is one surface like this. This is a blue color surface and this one is a um, dark surface if you can see. Yeah. So this surface which is present in front is the reflective surface, the reflecting surface. Okay. And this side behind this is known as non polished surface which I told you as polished surface. Okay, so this is the way of showing mirror in real life. But yeah, as far as we are concerned in optics, we will show like this. So I have already shown this um, dash you are seeing on the back side of the mirror is showing the polished surface or the opaque side. So from the opaque side, do you remember what is opaque side? You can relate it to opaque objects we have already seen in the last lecture. Yeah, so opaque objects are those objects which do not allow light. Yeah, so this is a kind of opaque surface. The polished side is a kind of opaque side. This front side is the reflective surface from which the reflection will take place. So this is the basically scientific symbol of mirror. And this is actual mirror. So in optics, you will show the mirror like this. Okay. In optics, you will show the mirror like this. Okay. Clear. Okay. Next. Now we are seeing laws of reflection. Now we are seeing laws of reflection. They are very important for image formation. Yeah. They are very important for image formation okay so what are laws of reflection i have already told you terminology this is the mirror so this one is the reflecting surface on the top and the back side is the polished one so this is the polished surface so reflection will take place from the top surface only yes or no so whatever you are seeing now this is the light which is coming on the mirror and meeting the mirror at point o suppose i name this point as o so this ray of light is known as incident ray. The light ray which is coming on the mirror is known as incident ray. And the ray which is going back, which is uh, going back into the same medium after the process of reflection is known as reflected. That's why I was saying the bouncing back of light into the same medium. This is known as reflection. Okay, so this is the incident ray before reflection and this is the reflected ray after reflection. And this is the dotted line which is known as normal. So normal is that line which is perpendicular to the surface at the point of incidence. So this O is known as point of incidence. Point of incidence. Point of incidence means where, wherever the incident ray is meeting the reflecting surface, that point is known as point of incidence. So in, normal is the perpendicular to the reflecting surface at the point of incidence. So this is the normal for this point of incidence O which is perpendicular to the surface and you know the angle between incident ray and the normal is known as angle of incidence. We basically represent this angle with a symbol small i. Okay. And the angle between normal and reflected ray is known as angle of reflection. We show this angle with a small r. 
like this. Okay, so these are the symbols to show angle of reflection and angle of incidence. Now, what does laws of reflection says? Laws of reflection has two laws. Basically, first law says that angle of incidence, that is I, is equals to angle of reflection. Clear? So, angle of incidence is equals to angle of reflection, that is laws of reflection. Clear? So, always angle of incidence is equals to angle of reflection. But remember one thing. These angles are measured between normal and incident ray and normal and reflected ray respectively. Okay. Suppose this angle is given as 30 degree. This angle is given as 30 degree. So this 30 degree is not angle of incidence. Angle of incidence is basically this. So this will be 90 minus 30 degree. Because this complete angle is 90 degree because normal makes 90 degree with the surface. So this 60 degree will be the angle of incidence. So always remember the angle of incidence and angle of reflection are from normal only yeah not from the mirror surface this thing is clear done okay so now see forward now what is the second law of reflection second law of reflection says the incident ray incident ray reflected ray reflected ray and normal all lie in the same plane. All lie on the same plane. So whatever the three rays you are seeing or the three lines you are watching in the figure, which is the incident ray, this one reflected ray and the normal, they all will lie on the same plane. Or this can simply means you can draw all these on a single piece of paper like this. This is known as on the same plane. So if I make a hand like this, so on this hand only incident ray will be here. Reflected ray will be here and normal is here. So all will lie on the same plane on this. It is not like that the incident ray is tilted like this from my hand. Yeah, it is not like that the incident ray will be tilted like this. And reflected ray will be tilted like this. All will always, all will always, what? Yeah, they will always be present on a single piece of paper or you can say on the same plane. So these are the two important laws of reflection. That angle of incidence equals to angle of reflection always. An incident ray, reflected ray, and normal all lie on the same plane. Then, one thing to remember is that always measure angle of incidence and angle of reflection from normal only, not from the reflecting surface. This thing is clear? Okay. Now, there are basically two images types of reflection. Types of reflection. Yeah. This is a specular reflection, this is a diffuse reflection. As the name is suggesting, specular reflection is a kind of uh, precise. Yeah, or you can say regular reflection. Regular reflection. So what you can see, this is a building. You can see the exact image of building in the lake. Yes or no? You can see the exact image. So this is regular reflection. And you are not now seeing the blur image of the building in the right side, which is known as diffused reflection. Which is known as diffused reflection. So the reflection in which you will observe the correct image or sharp image is known as specular reflection or regular reflection in the reflection in which you will observe the uh, I can I can say blur image or not a clear or sharp image is known as diffuse reflection okay so what is the basic reason for specular and then diffuse so for specular reflection the reflecting surface should be smooth reflecting surface should be smooth and for diffuse reflection the reflecting surface is irregular not smooth they are kind of like this surface, irregular type of surface. So whenever reflection takes place from a irregular reflecting surface, this is known as diffuse reflection and image will not be as sharp. And whenever the reflection takes place from a smooth surface, the image will be sharp. Okay. And that is known as regular or specular reflection. Getting my point? This is clear. Okay. Now you can see also we have already seen this. Suppose up observer is there. This is the observer who is who has to observe the image of a dinosaur. Who has to observe the image of a dinosaur through a hologram. Yeah, this is the hologram. So what will happen? Light rays coming from this. Yeah. What is the basic process of forming of image? If I tell you the basic formation of image, it goes like that. Suppose there is an object light rays coming from that object 
object can be luminous can be non luminous yeah if, if it is luminous it will emit its own light if it is non luminous then light will be coming from luminous object on that object so now this is a process light will come it will reflect from the mirror and it will reach your eyes so whatever you will observe is the image yeah but for image formation two things are required yeah or two light rays are required minimum two light rays are required two light rays are required for formation of any image yeah because image is forming at a point and if you can see or if you can remember one line that image is only formed when two light rays meet image is only formed when two light rays are meeting at a point yeah either they can meet in real or they can be appear to me so if you can see in this diagram this is a image two types of image one is the real image one is the virtual image okay one is the real image one is the virtual image okay so you can see from the eyes light rays are like this light rays are like this and they are getting reflected here they are getting reflected here yeah so in this point whenever real image is formed actually light rays are meeting at this point because if you combine these light rays they will appear to combine at a point like this so they will form a real image and in this diagram on the left you can see a blur image or dim image because this is not actually meeting you are extending these light rays backwards with dotted lines you are extended these reflected rays backwards with a dotted line so you are making it to appear at a point or you are making to meet them at a point yes or no these are actually meeting on the right these are not actually meeting in real so that's why the image is virtual and that's why the image is real yeah but the formation of image is due to the reflection okay so we have seen reflection what is reflection bouncing back of light rays in the same medium we have seen some terminologies also angle of incidence angle of reflection normal and we have seen laws of reflection also and types of mirror we have already done okay so should we move forward okay <clears throat> so now properties of an image using salt salt is a word used for three four things basically s for size s for size a for attitude okay L for location and T for type. Okay, these are the properties of image. If I ask you that size can be larger, can be same, or can be small. So image size can be larger, can be same, or can be smaller than the object. This one is larger, this one is same, this one is smaller. So the three things can be possible. Yeah, size of the image can be larger than the object. Size of image can be smaller, or size of image can be same of the object. Only three cases are possible. Yes or no? What about attitude? attitude means suppose this is the object this is the object and image is also like this so this is known as upright image same orientation as the object suppose image is like this this was the object this was the image so now the image is like this so this is known as inverted image in which the orientation of the body or the object has just reversed so you can see in this diagram also this is the upright image of a tree this is inverted image of a tree so that is known as attitude of the image we are basically considering properties of image what are the properties possible for image so we have seen size we have seen attitude now location location means its distance its the distance distance from where from the mirror because mirror is the one who is forming the image so you always measure image from the mirror only so this is image distance location means image distance then now fourth thing is type fourth thing is type yeah so fourth thing is known as type of image so type of image is of two types i already told you virtual or real we will go into depth in the next lecture next coming topic that what are virtual what are real images but for now image can be of two types virtual or real so these are the four types of properties which you can see according to size size can be larger smaller or of the same size attitude can be upright or inverted we have seen if the orientation of the image is same as the object it is a bright image if the orientation is just reverse it is known as inverted image so the thing is clear <clears throat> yeah up to this all is clear third one is location location means image distance and distance is always measured from the mirror and fourth is according to the type that the whether the image is virtual or real that we'll see in the next lecture done okay so now the next concept is pinhole camera this is a Uh, if i simply define this it is a optical device 
optical device or you can say simple optical device which can form which can form image without a lens or a mirror without a lens or a mirror okay so pinhole camera is that simple optical device which can form the image of an object without a lens or a mirror that is a simple optical device and it works on the principle of linear propagation of light it works on the principle of linear propagation of light okay so it works on the principle of linear propagation of light and it is a simple optical device which can form the image without a lens or a mirror so what does it do basically it pinhole means it has a hole it has also what we do we take two rectangular boxes we take two rectangular boxes like this one is the bigger one one box is of bigger size like this and another object or another box is of smaller size like this okay yeah but a smaller box should be like that it can easily go through the larger box so what we'll do we'll make a hole on the larger box like this and on the smaller box we'll make a square cut like this about 5 to 6 cm in size okay so what we'll do we'll just slide this smaller box inside the bigger box like this suppose this is the bigger box with a hole like this so you have to insert the smaller box such that the open part is just in front of the hole yeah open part is just in front of the hole so where you are making the square hole we will paste as translucent sheet here translucent sheet you can use a tracing paper simply you can use a tracing paper so this tracing paper or translucent sheet will act as a screen on which the image will be formed okay so this translucent translucent sheet or tracing paper will act as a screen on which image will be formed so what we do we make a hole on the larger box we make a square cut on the smaller box and insert the smaller box uh, with the larger box within the larger box in such a way that the hole of the larger box is in same line with the square hole of the smaller box and on the hole on the square hole you will paste a translucent sheet or you can use a tracing paper the thing is clear so what we'll do we'll then see a hole also yeah on the opposite end of the smaller box or opposite end of the larger box make them open make them open or you can also make a hole on the other side from which you will observe the image so you can see a image like this if you can see this is a hole and this is a screen this is the screen of the square square cut so this is the screen so you can see a image has been formed here this is the object this screen is the object and the image of this object is forming on the screen this yeah and one thing you should know that the image will be inverted image formed will be inverted yeah so we'll basically get a much briefer or much clear view by uh, just showing a video i'm just showing you a video in which you will see how a pinhole camera is constructed and how the image is formed formed so basic thing is that the image formed is inverted in that image shade size will be diminished diminished means smaller in size smaller in size okay and what is pinhole camera it's a simple optical optical device which can form the image without a lens or a mirror and it is based on the principle of linear propagation of light that light travels in a straight line path that is clear okay now we move towards the video first we'll see what the Yes, I'm playing the video. Principle of pinhole camera is based on rectilinear propagation of light. That is, light travels in a straight line. So you can see the principle of pinhole camera is based on rectilinear propagation of light. That is, light travels in a straight line. That I already told you. Let us learn the working and construction of pinhole camera. Now we are going to learn the construction and working of the pinhole camera in this video. The image formed by a pinhole camera is inverted and smaller in size when compared to the original object. This is the property of the image formed by a pinhole camera that image formed by a pinhole camera will be inverted. That is the opposite orientation as the object and smaller in size when compared to the original objects. 
Okay, let's move forward. Pinhole cameras are cheap and simple to make. Let's learn how to make a pinhole camera. We are learning Take how to make a rectangular box. camera basically. Yeah. So see, there are two rectangular boxes. One is larger and one is smaller, such that it can fit into the larger box. So this brown one is a larger, and this violet one is a smaller box that fit into one another without leaving any gap. Make a small hole in the larger box at the center. On the opposite side of the small box, cut from the middle a square of about 5 to 6 centimeters. Cuff you can see we have made a hole on the larger box and we have made a square cut of 5 to 6 centimeter in size at the middle of the smaller this opening with tracing paper and we have covered this opening with a tracing paper you can see yeah okay finally slide the smaller box into the larger box ensuring that the pinhole and the tracing paper are in line with one another so see what you have done you have just insert the smaller box slide the smaller box into the larger box and what you have ensured, you have ensured that the pin hole of the larger box and the tracing paper or the square hole are in line with each other. Yeah. Keep a lighted candle at a distance of 50 centimeters from pin hole camera. So this is a image formation. We are basically forming an image of a candle which is kept at a distance of 50 centimeter. Now let's see what is the image form. Now look at the candle through the hole of pinhole camera you can see the inverted image of a candle on the screen of the camera slide the smaller box to adjust the focus so that you can capture the clear image of a candle so you can see you have getting a inverted and a blur image in order to get a clear image just adjust or slide the smaller box within the larger box a point will come where you will get the clear image Stop at that point and look at the image clear. Now, let us see what are observations of the image formed in the pinhole camera. Number one, image of a candle formed is diminished in size. Number two, image of a candle formed is inverted. Number three, See, image was diminished, means it's smaller in size in respect to object. Image was inverted. That are the image of a candle formed has color. So this is another property that this image has the same color as the object. Let us see how image was formed. A light ray from top of candle A falls on the tracing paper at A1. After passing through the pinhole O, a ray from the bottom of candle B falls on B1. Similarly, rays from the candle fall on the tracing paper after passing through the pinhole. See what is the image formation process. Suppose this is a candle which is object. So the light ray from A is coming through the pinhole. This is the larger box O point pinhole. And it is entering the pinhole and reaching the point A dash on the tracing paper. This is the screen basically. So this is the image of point A which is get as A dash. Similarly, light ray from the bottom of the candle B goes through the pinhole and meet the tracing paper at B dash. So now you can see if you join A dash B dash, you will get a inverted and a diminished image after passing through the pinhole. So that is the reason why inverted images are formed and diminished after. Together. These points of light make up an image of a candle. You can see an inverted image of B1, A1 of a candle. You can see the image, yeah? What image you have seen? Real inverted and diminished. Now the thing is clear. What is pinhole camera? How the images are formed? Properties of image are real inverted image, yeah? Image has some color. Yes, clear? So what is the practical use of a pinhole camera? If you can see, you, if you travel through a road on a sunshine day, you and if you go nearby a tree, suppose you go nearby a tree, 
so from that tree you can see some shadows coming on the road of the sunlight you will see or i can see some bright spots i can say some bright spots of sunlight you will see on the road so that bright spots of sunlight is due to the process of pinhole camera yeah because the gap between the leaves act as a pinhole camera of the tree and the sunlight will travel like a light ray okay another example i can give you suppose is there is a room there is a room and light is coming from a hole inside the room so you will get to see the image of sun lighter part of the sun only dark room so why it is happening that hole in the room is acting like a pinhole that hole in the room is acting like a pinhole and you are getting the image there yeah you are getting the image here through the process of pinhole camera so i think pinhole camera is clear yeah okay <clears throat> so now see um, later inversion we will get into that later first see plane mirror basically we are now concerned with properties of image formed by plane mirror and location of image formed in a plane mirror or how to locate a image basically yeah so plane mirror always forms image based on the principle of reflection only based on the process of reflection so we can use the properties by forming a image how to see uh, or basically we are concerned with how image is formed in a plane mirror so using light rays if you can see there is a pencil you want to make a image of a pencil so what you will do you will make a light ray like this this light ray will get reflected yeah and you can make another image another light ray like this coming from the top of the pencil and meeting here so whenever you draw these light rays backwards you will see this will meet at a point like this a dash so whenever you go light rays reflected from point a they will reflected from the mirror like this and if you join it backwards if you join these two light rays backwards this blue one and red one they will meet at a point a dash or a i similarly light rays from b after reflection will meet at b1 this is seen in this diagram yeah you can see from b one was this reflection another ray was this which is getting reflected so if you draw back both these lines blue and red one they will appear to meet at point b1 or bi so if you join ai bi which are obtained by extending the line or reflected light backwards you will get the image of the object so that is the plane mirror image formation okay and you can also form image by using image line and light rays so image line means what is image line means image line means uh, the line which you are joining the object with like this suppose i am drawing a line straight here so this is straight line will go straight like here so we will get a point a dash in front of a dash a only and we will get a point b in front of b dash like this so this is the point here if you can see this a i is straight line with the a this bi is a straight line with b so this is another method of forming the image through a plane mirror now we are much more concerned about the image formation by plane mirror or properties of image formation by plane mirror okay so what are the basic properties if i see in a plane mirror you should remember that plane plane mirror image is virtual image is virtual that it is not actually forming it is uh, appear to form yeah image is virtual and image is upright upright means same orientation as the object okay another thing is that image distance image distance is equals to object distance image distance equals to objects so if you are standing in front of mirror uh, so suppose 10 cm in front of mirror your image will be formed 10 cm inside the mirror so that means image distance is equals to object distance and you know distances are always measured from the mirror so if you are standing 10 cm in front of mirror image of your image of your body will be formed 10 cm behind the mirror okay that will be virtual upright yeah and another property associated with plane mirror is that lateral inversion laterally inverted image is formed lateral inverted image is formed so what is the meaning of lateral inversion lateral inversion simply means if you can try at home also in front of your mirror if you raise your right hand if you raise your right hand if you can see in the diagram this person is raising his right hand in front of the mirror but yeah in the image what is happening its left hand is getting raised yes or no in the image what is happening its left hand is getting raised so that is known as lateral inversion if you are moving your right hand upward you will see your left hand moving upward in the image so that is mean as lateral inverted image that right becomes left left becomes right that is known as lateral inversion so these are the basic properties of image formed by plane mirror 
and plane mirror always forms image due to the process known as reflection of light yeah image formed by plane mirror is virtual it is upright it has the same distance as the object distance from the mirror and the image formed is laterally inverted so you can see laterally inverted image like this yeah you can see you can write ambulance you i think you have seen in your daily life on the ambulance the words are written in uh, reverse form the word ambulance is written in reverse form so why it is written in reverse form because if you see it through your car mirror if you see it through your car mirror you will exactly see ambulance word why because it is written reverse so due to lateral inversion what will you see suppose this was ambulance written like this which is shown here yeah, which is shown as ambu lens is shown like this so whenever you see this word through your car mirror you will see this like this ambulance so this is due to the lateral inversion this is due to the lateral inversion so for you to get a better view of the word ambulance or ambulance is coming your way the words are written in reverse form so that after lateral inversion you will be able to see the correct word ambulance that's why the ambulance word is written in reverse form on the ambulance so i think this concept is clear so today what we have learned we have covered reflection we have seen linear propagation of light we have seen some terms also related to reflection then we go through laws of reflection we have covered uh, types of mirrors we have covered um, pinhole camera that it works on the principle of linear propagation of light then we have seen the properties of image which are formed by the plane mirror okay so now hope this today's lecture is clear to you okay so in case of any doubt please reach to the forum doubts forum is present on the ask iitians website so please go through it if you have any doubt okay so thank you so much we'll end the class here thanks for your time bye bye